Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jimmy Gutman, author of several best-selling books on the topic of glutathione. Welcome to today's discussion. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to increase glutathione levels. I mean, the question is often asked, how do I raise glutathione in the human body? You would think that given all the options available on the market, that there would be a simple answer. In reality, the answer is a bit more complex and deserves a closer look. In this discussion, uh, we'll look at the most popular ways, oral glutathione, cysteine, cystine, please note the difference in both spelling and pronunciation, N-acetylcysteine or NAC, and finally, undenatured whey protein isolate, specifically immunocal. But first, it's important to look at glutathione itself. Glutathione is a tripeptide, meaning it's a small protein made up of three amino acids, those being glutamate, glycine, and cysteine. It's the cysteine that has the sulfhydryl group where most of the biological activity takes place. As far as the glutamate and glycine amino acids go, these are easily found in most diets and appear in most meals. They're abundant in foods. They are also not essential amino acids, so they can be obtained by eating other amino acids such as glutamic acid, glutamine, serine, threonine, and choline. So obtaining glutamate and glycine is easy. Cysteine, on the other hand, is much rarer in our diet and more difficult to obtain. Not only is it hard to get from your regular nutrition, it is also the limiting factor for glutathione synthesis. In other words, glutathione production is a function of cysteine availability. See, glutathione is made in your cell. Finally, it's only specific forms of cysteine that are biologically active, as we will soon see. Let's also look at another amino acid, cysteine. Again, please note the difference in spelling and pronunciation compared to cysteine. Cysteine is two cysteine molecules linked together by a disulfide bond. This makes cysteine a source of cysteine. I'll say that again. Cysteine is a source of cysteine. So we can use the term bonded cysteine in place of cysteine. Here we see the two molecules and note the disulfide bond between the two cysteines to form cysteine. I know this may at first be a little confusing, but it is important to understand. Cysteine requires an intact disulfide bond. Let's get back to undenatured whey protein isolate. Undenatured means that the original three-dimensional shape of the protein is intact and appears as it would in its natural form. You see that the protein is wound up like a ball of wool, and this allows contact between the individual strands of protein to keep it in its natural shape or configuration. This allows the disulfide bonds to remain intact. The problem with these whey proteins is that they are extremely sensitive to becoming denatured by heat, uh, pasteurization, uh, mechanical agitation, and other disturbances. What denaturization does is unfold the proteins so that they no longer are in their original shape. This breaks the disulfide bonds, and the end result is the molecule loses its ability to serve as a glutathione precursor. An unfolded protein does not behave like the original natural protein. Let's take an extreme close-up of one fold in the much larger protein. You see on the left a fold where two strands are physically close to each other. This allows 
a bond between the cysteine in one strand to bond to a cysteine in another strand to form cysteine. In other words, bonded cysteine is cysteine. On the right, the protein is unfolded and the disulfide bond is broken. This allows the cysteine molecule to become oxidized and loses potency as a glutathione precursor. Again, not easy to grasp at first, but you may want to replay this section of the video at a later time. Now, most people will wonder, why not just take cysteine supplements to raise glutathione? Um, they are easily available and found everywhere in the market. Uh, and in fact, uh, cysteine is promoted as a glutathione precursor. But has this been shown to be true? Well, in fact, it's not true. Eating cysteine is not an effective way to raise glutathione. It is extremely unstable in your digestive tract and is easily oxidized. Not only is the oxidized form of cysteine a poor glutathione precursor, it also carries a certain toxicity. The buildup of oxidized cysteine can serve as a pro-oxidant and cause side effects, usually gastrointestinal distress. Another proof of its inability to raise glutathione adequately is the fact that cysteine is not used in conventional medicine to raise glutathione. In the 1960s, an altered form of cysteine was developed that could withstand oxidation. Biochemists added an acetyl side chain, which offered protection uh, to the molecule and uh, is thus called NAC or N-acetylcysteine. So NAC can resist oxidation about 15% of the time, which means that 85% is oxidized which is why NAC has potential side effects that can be annoying. Also, the long-term use is limited because of this problem. Okay, why not just use cysteine? Good question, and it needs to be addressed. Cysteine itself is very poorly absorbed. It is also prone to easy oxidation. Uh, it just has not been shown to be a glutathione precursor. And that's why so few clinical studies have used cysteine to raise glutathione, <laughs> because it doesn't work. Now, in case some of you are not aware, eating glutathione does not raise your body's glutathione level. Glutathione is easily broken down in the digestive tract, and it just does not make it to the cells. This happens mostly because of an enzyme called GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase. Uh, people have tried getting around this by coating glutathione or otherwise manipulating it, but there is not enough substantial evidence to show that this approach works. There may be a paper or two, but science needs validation with more than one or two studies. Oral glutathione is an ineffective way to raise body stores of glutathione. So what exactly works? well to raise glutathione levels in a human being. Well, we've seen that oral glutathione is not an efficient way to raise glutathione levels. Glutathione is produced by the cell itself. So the way to raise glutathione is to provide the cell with the precursors or building blocks to manufacture their own glutathione. The cell requires the specific nutrients to make glutathione. That's the bottom line. There are currently only two medically accepted ways uh, to do this. Undenatured whey protein isolate, otherwise known as immunocal, or NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, NAC is used universally around the world as a glutathione precursor. It has literally thousands of clinical studies published on it. It is the choice used by medical practitioners and by hospitals. And it's available by prescription and in certain countries as a supplement as well. It has a few problems, however. Number one, it has what is called a short half-life 
about three to four hours. So in order to keep glutathione levels continually high, it needs to be taken three to four times a day. And it has a taste and smell that many people cannot tolerate. And uh, it also has side effects, usually nausea, vomiting, cramps, and other symptoms. And because it should be taken multiple times during the day, you'll feel three times as sick the third time you take it. It's also not recommended for long-term usage because of the buildup of oxidized cysteine, which can turn into a situation called hypercystinemia, which is a pro-oxidant state. Finally, undenatured whey protein isolate, also known as immunocal. This has been studied uh, for over 40 years of uh, clinical investigation. Uh, there is a wealth of available published research articles. It shows up in some of the major medical reference books in the world, and it has very little known adverse effects. And a single dose of immunocal can show results days after ingestion. So which to choose? Well, we've already pointed out some differences that can make up your mind, but let's take a deeper dive into the biochemistry and how these two differ. Let's look again at how a cell makes glutathione. You see, glutathione is made by the cell. Get some glutamate. Where? Well, whey protein will provide you with glutamate. NAC will not. Get some cysteine. Again, whey protein will provide a great source of cysteine. And in its undenatured form, will also provide you with cysteine in the form of bonded cysteine. NAC works by providing cysteine as well. But remember, only 15% of the cysteine in NAC is protected from oxidation, which means that 85% is not protected and will become oxidized. And this is the reason it carries a degree of toxicity. So the cysteine is combined with glutamate, and this forms the molecule gamma glutamyl cysteine. See it there? This step is carried out through the use of an enzyme called dipeptidase. Why do I mention this? Uh, this dipeptidase is the rate limiting enzyme for this step. So here's an important difference. NAC requires dipeptidase to form gamma glutamyl cysteine. If dipeptidase is missing or in short supply, well, undenatured whey protein can directly supply gamma glutamyl cysteine. This is a major advantage of whey protein over NAC. Now, glycine must be added. Where to get glycine? Well, whey protein will give you glycine, but NAC won't. Another difference. Finally, the enzyme glutathione synthesis is used. And the final step is the production of glutathione. So you see, whey protein isolate fills in many more of these steps than does NAC. It's critical. But wait, the differences continue between these two. Whey contains all of the essential amino acids needed by humans, all of them. NAC provides none of them, none of them. So to quickly summarize the differences between the two, both of them raise glutathione. NAC has a short half-life of about three to four hours. Immunocal is effective for days. NAC has side effects. Side effects are rare for whey protein isolates like Immunocal. NAC is a great and effective drug used worldwide. Immunocal not only raises glutathione, but here's a major point. Whey protein isolate is a superior source of nutrition. 
In fact, it has the highest biological value of any known edible protein. Let's look at why whey is considered great nutrition. Well, what is biological value? It's a measurement of how valuable a protein is to your general metabolism. Clearly, different proteins differ in their value to your general nutrition. Eating a hot dog will not provide you with the same value than eating a nice piece of fresh salmon. And these biological values can be quantified. Here we see a list of different BVs from different protein sources, and we see that whey protein isolates have absolutely the highest biological value. So Immunical has the highest BV of any edible protein on the market. Immunical contains all of the essential amino acids needed by man. NAC only contains cysteine. The choice is clear. Thank you for your attention.